Hello and welcome to the Kevin Campbell Show. It's me, Kev, and... Lee Judges. Look, we're going to go straight into it because we've got a lot to cover this week. First off, Lee, I've got to say my five things that I'm going to uh, concentrate on are, are, are not really player-related, but they're more club-related, as it's an international break. Are Arsenal good, but just lacking confidence, or are we just a bad side? That's number one. Number two is must the board act now? Number three, you love this one, is new manager. We're going to look at all the candidates and all the rumours, etc. Right, yeah. Number four is a bit of a spicy one. It's Lacazette and Obama Yang, their contract positions. Because I think we're in a bit of a dicey spot right now. And last but not least, and I think this is one you mentioned to me when we had some dialogue, are the players playing for Una Emery? So, Lee, are Arsenal a good side, but just luck and confidence? Or are we bad? Well, we're not good, are we? We're not good at the moment. My ex-manager phoned me up the other day and said to me, you know, Lee, you keep going on at Emery, you keep going on at Emery, but really that you've got to be looking at the players as well. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, I see good players. He said, how many of those players are playing in top international teams? And we had a discussion about it yesterday. Sabias is, is, is the only one. Leno was mentioned, doesn't play. Mm -hmm. Lacazette doesn't get in the French side. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look back at our top, top teams, we had full of, internationals. full of internationals, World Cup winners. Yep. You know what I mean? If they weren't like playing for Holland that got to the semi-finals of, of World Cups, yeah. England, you know what I mean? Because they was a the top side once upon a time, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So, but it's true, no, there's no, you know, no real top, top international players playing for Arsenal. So the, my answer to that is I don't think that, you know, we are good enough. I think the recruitment, I think Tony Adams has pulled it up on Sky. I didn't watch it, but like people were saying, the recruitment has been poor over the last few years. Do you think that's, that's the only issue, why we're poor? Or do you think, because I'm seeing, I, I, I get that, but I'm seeing teams with less talent doing a lot better yeah. than us. Well. You know, because man for man, if you look at Leicester and Arsenal, man for man, we have more talent. But they're better than us. And, and they're better than us by a long shot. I didn't think they played particularly well. But they had in more than enough to beat yeah. us. They knew exactly what how to play. So they knew what exactly they doing. what to do. You know, I've done two bad things over the weekend. Well, no, three. One was going to Leicester, <laughs> getting soaked. Two, when I, uh, when I got home on Saturday night, I put match of the day on and watched Sheffield United Spurs because I need a little bit of cheering up because it's the Spurs. <laughs> and I watched a team like Sheffield United with no superstar players yeah. play a, a game plan to a tee, defended fantastically well, knew exactly what they was doing player for player, Sheffield United and... and I, would any of those players play for Arsenal on paper? No. But well, Lee, if any of those players ever got mentioned for Arsenal, yeah, what would the Arsenal fan base say? Not good enough. Not good enough for us. No. Johnny Evans, you remember Johnny yeah. Evans got, got linked with Arsenal. Oh, we don't want him. Yeah. United's cast. I was one of them. I was one of them. Yeah, but, but uh, that just goes to show is sometimes it's not about the, the talent so-called. Can he, can he, does he come out from the back with the ball? How good a defender is he? Yeah. He's, a, he's a damn good defender. He, we got, we shot our, he shot our front lot out. Yeah, exactly right. And, 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 you know, he is what Arsenal probably need, you know. But because, no we've been so, because we've been so poor, we're now talking about Johnny Evans. That's how poor the other defenders are, Kev. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not, yeah. No disrespect to him. No, of course, yeah. But, you know, I'm saying, you know, I would like to see Arsenal, whenever they go to Spurs, play like against Sheffield United, like the way Sheffield United play. It was fantastic. So that was, a, that was the first thing I'd done wrong, you know, I went a bit even worse, like, you know. <laughs> and how did you wake up? Mate? I woke up in a mood, I've got to say Bloody that, like, you know what oh, I mean? Geez. But I, I got soaked at Leicester and I, was, I had the ump. I thought, oh, do you know what? I'm going to watch the big one. I'm going to watch Man City and, and Liverpool. Big, big mistake, because I'm even more depressed now. Because what I see was players, I, I, as I said just, just now, I see three players, three attacking players for Liverpool, winning 3 0, working their socks off. I see three players for Man City losing 3 0, 
working their socks off. I then reflect to a soaking wet Saturday evening at Leicester, our three front players, nowhere near at the same level of work intensity, rate, yeah. intensity yeah. as those guys here. And we was at nil-nil and one nil down. Lee, what do you put it down to? Because if it's good enough for Liverpool and it's good enough for Man City, why, isn't it, why shouldn't that be the blueprint for Arsenal? And, and don't forget, when, U when Unai Emery came into the club, he actually said, we're going to be a pressing team. And I think that gave fans a lot of, a, a, a lot of heart to, to know that we're going to be aggressive and go for it. But I think we're totally the opposite. I don't see us as a pressing team All I say is anything. What, 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 um, where's all that gone? Where has all that pressing gone? Where, where has all that gone? Where is all the work rate gone? If you're watching that game, you know what I mean? This is what really getting, getting me down at the moment. If you was on the board, you know, you know your football. You know that ain't good enough. Yeah, I know. You know that's not good enough. So why are the board saying it is? Or they're accepting it, you know? Well, d don't forget, Lee. I, I think we're going we're gonna to get onto the board next. Right, OK, sorry. But, but, no but as a board member, you know it's not right. Let's be honest. You know, you, the eye test tells you it's not right. The crowd tells you yeah, it's not right. So, so right. So right. You know, you, you, you get the vibes. You do. I, I'm, 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 a couple of things really upset me and all that. I, Arsenal fans coming out at the end of the game going, and this is genuine, I'm not lying to you this. I'm not lying to you. Going, well, I told me it weren't bad. We were saying three or four at the beginning of the game. This, you know what I mean? There's less to see. Accepting. And Just accepting. accepting Mediocrity. Ex accepting that. Now, and I, I, I've got to say this, the fans on, I don't know if it come through over on Saturday, the TV and all that on Saturday, the fans from the minute that game kicks off to the 90th minute, they were behind a team, backing it, backing it, backing it. And then the club turn around and say, that, oh, the noise, we're not happy with. So disrespectful. So disrespectful to the fans that are going out there week in, week out, put, spending their money and then having to put up with that. Drivel, absolute poor performances, you know. Minus one we are after goal, 12 games yeah, on a goal yeah, difference. Goal, goal different. I mean, it's, so where's, it's, where's our attacking, look at our pressing, where's our attacking gone with all of that talent? Yeah, but look, Lee, remember there was, there was a big clamour for Ozil, wasn't there? You know, Ozil's the creator, he needs to be in the team. And I know he's not, he's, he's only had a small sample size of Ozil for, for this season. But if he's that big creator... He's got to create something. He's got to create something. And, and by the way, the tactic of playing Aubameyang and Lacazette, well, just... like other ends of the uh, uh, M1, is ridiculous. Yeah. It was ridiculous <laughs> to do, me. Do you know what? I'm glad you said that because uh, I, I think, honestly, Emery's looked at it. I know, uh, this is me being like being a little bit devil here. Like I can't have him doing well. So what I do is... Because when I see the team, I thought, oh, this is set up for me. I was yeah. all right, you know? So... I think, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put him in the team and I'll play them two as wide as I possibly can. So when he gets the ball, he's got no option. Every time he got the ball, where was, where was Mesut Ozil's option to create? It wasn't there. It wasn't there. It was only wide. So It was only it was, wide. It was only wide, really. And, and you've got Aubameyang and Lacazette marking their fullbacks. Come on, Kev. You can't... You, the tactics of it all... And, and Lee, the, the tactics of that, if you're a fullback... And the striker comes and marks you. What are you gonna do? You know you're in for it. You know <laughs> you're, you're gonna take it. Of course you are. Because you, you know it. you've been a forward. You know if you've got to do it, you'll do it. Yep. But you don't. You don't. You want to be going that way, not of course that way. You, do. you know what I mean? So Especially it, it, as a striker. As a striker. As so a striker. Oh my. I'm goodness. not saying that your heart's not going to be in it, but like. You, 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 you want to be going where you're favoured. Yeah, exactly. Not, you don't want to be going you back You don't want to be there. chasing back and then being at the edge, edge of their box. It turns know. over and then you've got another, another eight yards, yards to go. go. Yeah, it's crazy. So I don't, you know, so when we say we're not good enough, I, I do think that the players have got to look at themselves now, Kevin. Yeah. really have got to look yeah. at themselves, you know what I mean? Because whether they're playing for the manager or we're going to that, they're still putting on the red and white shirt or the yellow and blue shirt of Arsenal and they're not performing. Yeah. But also... Are they being hampered by the tactics and, and, and the way we're playing? I just don't see, I don't see no like bru uh, blueprint of saying this is how we're going to play the game. Well, I don't even think the manager knows his best team. We've we've said that now for probably three or four weeks, but there's been an issue with players, us saying that players ain't playing in their natural positions. 
But he obviously he changed the system a little bit on Saturday and we looked a little bit more solid at times. Yeah. We did. But we carried no threat, no real threat. We could have scored, we could have nicked one with Lacazette in the first half. But we still looked a bit disorganised once they scored. It all starts oh, to unravel. Gone. We knew we were going to lose the yeah. game. It all started to unravel. And to be fair, 2-0 could, could have probably been more in the end. But, you know, you take your 2-0 and uh, don't like it. But that's going to move me on to, to the next point now, which is number two. Should the board act now? Because the eye test... And I always go with my eye test. You know, just listening to people speak or, you know, I wasn't there or whatever is one thing. But when you actually watch it yourself, you get a sense, this isn't Arsenal. That's what I feel. This isn't Arsenal Football Club. No. So, as a board member, you mentioned it to me before. As the board can see it, Raul and Edu were there and they, they had faces of thunder. And... Don't forget, the board ain't exactly going to come out and say we're looking for. No, a, I get. We're that. looking for I someone. You know what I mean? They're not going to say that. But should the board act now? In your opinion? In my opinion, it, it, it should be gone. It should have been gone Sunday morning. I, I, I think that. You know, I really do believe that. I think that we need to um, move it on. I honestly can't see. This is my opinion. If I was on the board now, uh, what I would be saying, and I, this is, I'm not even going to. I cannot see where we're going to improve. Right, we've got Southampton in, a, in, in two weeks' time. Can you put a lot of money on that Arsenal are going to beat Southampton who are struggling and all that? Like, I can't. No. So I feel that we've got a run of games, about four games, which are winnable games and all that. But if you had a new manager in, it's nice to be bedded in and, and go from there. Go from there. So, you know, the ball may be looking at it and going, oh, he has these four games, and then we've got Man City. So if things go wrong in those four games, then we play Man City. Where, where are they going to, at some stage, go enough's enough? Now, I, I look at the game, like, I think Leicester's a perfect, I think the, the, the other two, Liverpool and Man City, forget about them, but like the rivals are Leicester City, Chelsea, Manchester United, then down the road mm -hmm. for, that, for those top four spots. I, I, I watch Leicester, and we're nowhere near we're nowhere as good near as them, Kev. No, we're not. No, we're near as way off. We're way and off. And I'm, yeah. I'm going to ask the question: way off? And they're at a new manager, halfway through the tenure that we've had this manager, and you know you can see a vibrant. Well, not side. even halfway. He's only cut. It's when you think about it. If we're honest, and, and Arsenal fans get a lot of stick for 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 being negative and all that, but they've given. Unai Emery, a season's grace. Yeah. Give him a season's grace. You know, he's going to change it and he's, gonna, he's got a lot of things to work. He's got to get rid of Deadwood. He's got this and that to do. Had a decent season. Messed up at the end. Yeah. Didn't it? It went pear-shaped at the end. <sighs> Big time. But we've never recovered from that. Have that, we? That, that, yeah, exactly. That we, is a thing. That's a great point. We've actually never recovered from those last eight or nine games Eight in the league and then the Europa yeah, League final. That's a great point. We have never recovered. So we've kind of, we're still hung over. Yeah. And it's his job to drive the team forward. But it seems as though we're regressing. Yeah. So should the board act now? For me, I think Unai Emery's a nice man. He's a nice man. But I don't want nice man. I, I don't want a nice man. He's ruining my weekend, Keith. Yeah. Well, Lee, he's it's, it's ruining a lot of people's weekend, to be honest. Look, I could I could take a defeat if the team perform. I could take a defeat. Yeah, yeah. Every every now and then, Kev. Not no, every. No, I'm not saying I, I, I like defeat. Nah. I said I could take a defeat if the team perform, get beat. But when they don't perform, yeah, and they're not performing, and they're throwing away leads on a regular basis, for me, sorry, there's yeah. got to be change. And there's got to be change now. Yeah. So, as far as I was concerned, the board would need to act now to rectify and to, to steer the ship in the right direction because the, the players, to me, look a bit... They look as though they're not focused. They're unfocused. They look like they haven't got... They haven't got that togetherness. Like you say, you see with Liverpool and Man City... You know, even though they're 3-0 down, Man City are grafting. They yeah, know exactly yeah, yeah. what to do. They stick into the game plan. Arsenal look like they've got no game plan. 
They've got no plans whatsoever. Well, well, they've got no plans whatsoever, and that's why he's so disjointed, and that's why we're throwing away leads on a regular basis. There's been a lot of rumours flying about about a new manager coming in. There's that M word who I don't even want to mention him. Who, Mickey Mouse. Yeah, probably Mickey Mouse. Yeah. I don't want to mention him who played who was manager no. of the rivals. No. Uh, two of our rivals. And apparently got spotted out having dinner with Ralph, which which is nonsense. But I wouldn't have him anyway. No. I'm... I don't want him anywhere near the club. But let's look at some of the can other I, candidates. Can I ask a question on that though? Right, ask because a it was asked it was asked at me like, you know. Emery or Mourinho? I don't need to answer that. Really? So you're saying you'd, you'd have it as I'd have well. none of them. I'd have Freddie in. Yeah, so I'd get rid of no, Emery. No, I'm just saying like... No, no. They, he, he's not in. He's not in. Right, OK. And Emery's gone. Right, OK. So if that's the case, I'll have none of them. Right, I'm with you on that. I, I'm, I'm yeah, not a Mourinho And I don't have fan. to choose one. But there are a lot of Arsenal fans now, Kev, are saying Mourinho. Is that, is that how bad Arsenal have become? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is it. That, that fans could... Sell their soul to the devil. I say that as a as a just a saying. Sell their soul to Mourinho, who's absolutely lambasted Arsenal, yeah. taken the Mickey out of Arsenal, taken the Mickey out of Arsene Wenger when he was he was our manager, etc. You know, specialists in failure and all that. That's aimed at us. That ain't just a manager. That's aimed yeah, at yeah, us. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so we was all right at criticizing, <laughs> but Mourinho yeah, ain't like that. Right. Listen, that's this, how it is. This is how it is. So. Some of the names, obviously Allegri's got mention. Um, Rafa Benitez has got a mention, who's, who's, who's stuck out in China right now. Um, what's his, Luis Enrique, who you, you, obviously... You just want to remember, like, you, yeah, you I said mentioned Luis Enrique, Enrique. And, and I know, obviously, that there's, he's, he's going through some bereavement um, with, his, with, his, with his family and stuff like that, with his uh, daughter passing away. But it might be the, the kickstart he needs to to get back into work, to you know, to get hands on and to to, to just move on with his life. It, it might be the case, it might not. I, I'm not sure. But attacking football, that that guy knows how to play. He knows how to play attacking football. We've got Aubameyang, Lacazette, Ozil, and Pepe, and the four of them have never played together. No, nah. never been on the pitch. You would think that four, you build a team around that and you say, right, you guys just get on with it. Yeah. And, and, and we'll do all the legwork around you. But don't happen. But, but not. Any, any other candidates from Yeah, Julie? for me, to, uh, definitely. I know that every keeps going and he won't leave Leicester and all that. For me, Brendan Rodgers, because I, I believe what Arsenal need more than anything is a coach. Someone that's going to coach him. Someone that's going to make... Maitland Knowles a better, better, player. better player. Make Willock a better player, you know what I mean? Because it's obvious that Arsenal are not prepared to spend big, big money, mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah, on the top, true. top, top players. So we have to create them. So we're going to have to get someone in here that can coach them. You know, somebody of that, you know, ilk. Now, people say that he, he's, he won't leave Leicester. Well, Maguire. Test it. Yeah, exactly. Maguire left Leicester, who obviously look, looked very good last season, to go to Man United. If... Arsenal's a big club. If you know, if you come knocking, you've always said that. If Arsenal come knocking, it's People a different listen, knock. Yeah, it's a different, yeah, different knock. knock. So at the end of the day, that was the be the one I'll go for. I watched Leicester. I've got to say this, you know what I mean? And they were fantastic the other day. I watched them every time. That they're coached properly. They're drilled properly. I want to see that. That was the thing that I wanted when Arsene Wenger left to see that. Uh, I, I watched the Sheffield United game. I was seeing them drilled and coached, and. Then I see Arsenal, you know, it's, it's all over Lee, the shop. Lee, just to, sorry to interject, but I want to put this point to you. Do you think, do you think that the Arsenal players could be uncoachable? Because if you remember last season, if you remember last season, they, they were going through spells of looking really drilled. But this season, yeah. they're all over the place. I don't understand why they're not, because somebody said that, funny enough, someone said that was coming on the way home. These players have been coached or involved with good coaching since mm. six years of age, and then they, all of a sudden they get onto the, the big stage and they can't defend and they can't do this and they can't take instructions. 
I know it goes back to, to Maitland Niles the other day on Thursday. He's got a chain round his neck. It's ridiculous. I, I couldn't believe it. You know, what does that tell you, Kevin? That, that, you know what that tells me? You know what the truth? Well, you know, that come on, just tell it. Tell it. That, that tells me he's not focused. He's not fully focused. He's not fully focused because when you're getting yourself ready to play, everything comes off. You're going into battle. Yeah. It, right? You, you're going in. So you, you've got to know it's an awareness that you have. When you're in that dressing room, you have an awareness of, of what's what. But to have a chainer, I mean... It's, look, Kevin, it's ridiculous because I'll tell you why. Because, right, it's not... This is not semi semi fresh or it's not even, you know, Sunday morning when, when you're running late. These guys have been there all day. Preparing. Preparing. Think, you know, when you're in the hotel, thinking about what you're going to do. Now, somebody like him, Kevin, right, is not in the... You know, he's playing... He's got his chance in midfield to... to so, I think yourself, right, I'm going to stay focused. I need to perform today yeah. to show this manager and show them fans out there that I can do a job in midfield. So I'm going to be prepared. Everything's going to be right, from my socks to my shin pads to my boots, yep. everything. And he comes on with a chain. Now, people might go, oh, don't think... I think it tells you a lot you up might, here. Well, that's the whole point, Lee. It's, people might think well, it, it's, you're being picky, but, hey, I've been in the dressing room. I know you've been in dressing yeah. rooms. You know when you're switched on, when you're switched on and you're at it, things like that, it's natural. It just comes off, gets put away. You know it's done, but to have a chain on in oh, a Europa right. League game, so, and it's a great chance for him to shine. It says a lot, and I think that you know it says a lot about the, 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 know, regime. the, the regime. The regime that are they being properly focused? So that tells me that you know, yes, Arsenal might go and get a result one week. They might go and beat someone, but they ain't going to be able to do it consistently because because there's not you know collective focus. collective focus. Collective focus, or even your mate. If, if if I saw you have a chain on and I could say I said Lee, Lee get that off yeah yeah exactly. you know so again that's what teammates do if everyone's collective and in I mean look I don't want to get off the topic but there's a severe lack of focus yeah that's what it, you were saying like you know what I mean focus in, in are squad. they good enough or are, can't they be coached do they lose focus when they're being do you know what I mean like they're, you're you're doing a drill. And then all of a sudden you're turning around and saying, oh, what are we doing later on, Kev, or saying like that. Is that going on? It, it, it is it, all, well, all geared. It look, Things are not great. Yeah, it looks as though they're, un they're uncoachable right now because the coaching, I'm sure Una Emery, he's been brought in as a coach to be able to mm. coach him, but it seems to be falling by the wayside. So would you, would you class a someone like Eddie Howe into that category who can yeah, improve I'll, players I'll, as well? Yep. Yeah. I would, I would put him in there. Why not? Why I mean, not? He's, he's done a fantastic job at, at Bournemouth. Bournemouth, yeah. Why not? That young manager. I, I'm not worried about a name now. You know what I mean? Some, yeah. some, like, listen, you know what I mean? Like, you know, because, you know, Emery was this thing from whatever, like, uh, France, um, doing well there, Spanish, got a nice little ring to it, and it? Luis Enrique has got a lovely ring to it. Eddie Howe's a little bit dull, isn't it? Smith's not got the greats. So I've had enough now, now, now. Like, bring it, bring it in. Chris Wilder at Sheffield United. Listen, he's done a fantastic job. What could he do with better players? Yeah, and it's, it's, so somewhere along you got you got to look at like that. I'm not saying that's the way to go, but I've I'm fed up now with going to away games and seeing people getting coached and getting done. Look at it's, it was on the radio today. Newcastle are in disarray, but Newcastle fans now not having nothing to do with Steve Bruce, all of a sudden now they're seeing improvement, improvement. slight improvement, not seven points better than Rafael Benitez now. All of a sudden, they're going, oh, do you know what? They're turning around, they're, they're coming on side. They're turning a little bit coming towards on side. Because they see improvement. Arsenal fans, oh, we're all critical on that, but we're not seeing no improvement. Arsene Wenger's worst season, you and I, Emery, cannot improve on, Kevin. Yeah, and that's terrible. So he's never going to improve on his best season, is he? Yeah, it? no, that's... Well, his best season was invincible. Yeah, so so he's, he's, yeah, he's, right. you're never so going to do that. You're never going to do that. He's never gonna, not going to equal it either. No. Because uh, because at the end of the day, this guy... There was one name that got mentioned, and I want to chuck it into the hat, and it was um, Stephen Gerrard. I've heard that. And um, what what's your thoughts on, on Stephen Gerrard? Because I when I saw it, I thought... He's, he's in his second season as a manager now. Obviously, he's done been coaching. He was coaching at Liverpool before. Then he's, he's, he's coming at Rangers and he's done a decent job. Yeah. 
you know, they're playing, they're playing good football, they're playing, you know, aggressive football. Would would he be someone who you'd say? I, I'm, again, I'm a young, vibrant coach, got no problems with that. You know what I mean? For, look at what Frank Lampard's doing. He's at, doing great. Um, He's doing great you know, everybody chance. was saying he weren't going to do great because he had one year at Derby. You know, and with a transfer ban. And, and with a transfer ban. So, you know, obviously doing something on the training field. I, I also think with Stephen, you know, one thing I'm not going to do now is like, Everybody like thought, oh, I'm not going to have Van Dyke because he come from Celtic. He's not going to be here this great. But that's a myth now. You know what I mean? If he's good enough, he can come in there and do the job. I, I wouldn't be uh, too uh, against it. The only thing that I worry is he's a Liverpool man. But, you know, once he gets the spell bound Arsenal once he comes him, under the, yeah, under under the, under the Arsenal, guns, mate. Under the, the guns, under the cannon. Under, yeah, under the cannon, be mate. He'll, he'll, he'll be fine. Yeah, he'll be fine. Fantastic footballer. You know what I mean? So the players would definitely uh, respect him. Yeah. And I also think that it's important, the coaching staff as well, that he gets behind him. He's got like experience with Gary McAllister there. He's a good guy that. as well. He's a good guy. So, oh, good guy. Um, so I, as I say, I'm not ever going to go against... Whoever they appoint, I'll back. But it's got to be a young, vibrant coach as far as well, I'm concerned. Well, we saying. could chuck Arteta in there as well. Arteta, Can't we? Vieira. And uh, Vieira, Freddie. Yeah, you know, there's that's the old Arsenal boys yeah. we can chuck in there and as I'd well. I like to see him get a few of the old Arsenal players, players in the back, back in the background. backroom staff. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Aubameyang and Lacazette's contract situation, mm. because we seem to be all at sixes and sevens as a team. There's rumours. Obviously, you're going to start getting rumours when things ain't going right. Real Madrid are interested in Aubameyang for January. Um, you know, teams are after Lacazette. Why would they sign new contracts when the club's not going anywhere? Do we run the risk of having Unai Emery in place well, and having the, the risk they run contracts down to the summer? Because if, if, if the rumours has it or the, the, pre, the media has it, they're going to give it Emery until the summer. If we get to the summer and we're, we're nowhere near the Champions League, what do you expect to happen? Well, I expect them to go. The, the, the problem we've got now is come January, right, these guys are not going to be cup tied for the uh, Champions League. So, that, you know, just about, like, oh, I'll tell you what, we, if we had a Bamiang in our squad, we could, it could be the, the difference, difference between the difference between us winning the Champions League or not. So we're in a very precarious position. Now, on top of that, if we are, we're nine points off of it now, we could be like another 15 points off the top four or something like that. So they, these guys then know that they're not going to get Champions League football. And then the ball are going to turn around and say, well, do we... Do we stick or twist. Stick or twist. And the fact, the fact of the matter is, they're going to have to say, we're going to have to sell now because it's going to be more money for them. And, and that puts us even further back down the line. This is why I go back to this, this such an important decision to get this right. With the manager now, and I don't, I, you know, I fear for these two. I fear for these two. Not so much Lacazette, if I'll be honest. I don't think somebody said to me yesterday, can Lacazette command the same sort of money he's getting at Arsenal? I don't know, maybe, you know, he's on a lot of money. I think if Lacazette <laughs> came on the market, there'd be more than enough takers. There'd be more than enough. Yeah, but could he get the money that he's, he's getting at Arsenal? Yeah, why not? I don't know, that's yeah, what I'm asking. No, right? Yeah, I think he can. I think he can. I think, you know, look, Arsenal. Arsenal, ain't, Arsenal are big payers, but they're not the biggest payers. Let's have it right. Yeah. So there'll be clubs who could, who could work a package for him, definitely. You know, the, 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 the issue for me is we've just made Aubameyang captain. <laughs> and Aubameyang's captain. So would he be fully in? Is he, is he the captain to lead all the way? I love Aubameyang as a player. I know we're going to get onto a, an issue at Leicester that you um, took sp specific, you weren't too happy about, Lee. But we made him captain. W we could be losing our captain. Another well, one, because well, I think Jack has done. We're, we're used to that. You're, we're, we're used like to losing that, captains, but two in one year, I mean. Well, that, well that, you know, that just shows you. Like, I, don't, I don't go to the Emirates no more. I call it the circus. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to the circus because that's what it is. You know what I mean? For, 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 for if, you, if you're going to make a Bamiyan captain and you know that he, he's not having the contracts and not going really well, that's a, that's a, 
you know, I mean, for them, that's a big thing. So, well, do they know that he's going to stay? So, well, if if I was going to give him the captaincy, I'd make sure I'd tie him with a new deal. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's what you know you'd what do, I mean? wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. You you, you you cover yourself. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, you, you you're quite right. It's a circus yeah. because there's nothing nothing in sync. No, this is just it just it's everything. Just every, get, too much going on, yeah. isn't there? You know, it's crazy. Lee, in your opinion, are the players actually playing for Unai Emery? My opinion? Yeah. I watched it the other day, no. I'll tell you why. And I said it on I said it on an interview the other day. When your club captain or the captain, your team captain, one nil down, you know, away. Go, away, in the balance, pulls out of a tackle and they score from that, tells me everything I want to know. I mean, we know Aubameyang's not <clears throat> gonna crunch into tackles. I get that. But but so so it, just explain what you're saying regarding pulling out. Where what would you expect him to put his body put his body there on you the know line? What I mean? On his line. I'm not saying going to the crunch attack, stick a leg out, but he actually pulled out of it, and then they go and score from it. Like you know, that that infuriates fans. I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? I and I also think as a, as a player when I play, you you, you someone that Lee Lee's ne necessarily be the best player in the team, but someone you think, do you know what? He's going to make me play better. And he's gonna when it when it when it matters, right? I'm I'm gonna give it my all. I look at Sterling the other day, not backing down to, to, to anything, to, to, to anything. Gomez or anything. Uh, 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 yeah, three 0 down. It's got him. It's got him in hot water, yeah, hasn't yeah, it? It's got well, him in hot water I mean? today. But at the end of the day, uh, as a fan, I don't get. I, I'm not worried about England. Yeah. As a Man City fan, I'm loving that because we're three 0 down, and he's still really still prepared. Up, he's still up for it. Still up for it, and saying, Do you know what, I ain't a pushover. I, I looked at. To me, that just looks at me and thinks, you know, you know, we're a beaten side. You know, all right, they they were losing Man City three 0 They're probably going to lose, but you think to yourself that that brings you going forward. You a know, lot, you know, you, know yeah. you can rely on that. Yeah, you know that, yeah, yeah. And I look at what what's going forward, and I think, well, if that's our captain doing that, what does that that say about other players and other and other things? You yeah. know, and I I look at that game on on. Uh, Saturday, and I think when they went 1 0 down, the players then capitulated. So that m tells me they didn't believe in the system in the first place that was going to get them the result. So they just went down, went tools, down a tools a little bit, like you know. And when you see other teams working their socks off for the calls, now you're telling me that Aston Villa's calls is different to ours. Um, I watched them, all right, they lost at Wolves, but I seen them working to a man. Mm -hmm. On a system, I see Sheffield United. You know, their their object is different to stay in the Premier course, League yeah. and and fighting two for now. For every ball, every ball, just to stay in the Premier League. You know what I mean? And then I see our lot pulling out of tackles, not working as hard as the opposition. That's always something that's always been said when I've played football, you play football, watch football, and all that. Work as hard as the opposition, and your class will tell. Well, that's right. Talent, talent, talent will, will overdo will, it. Will overdo, you know, yeah. Earn the right to, to play. play. That's right. Definitely. And, and I'm looking at that team and I'm thinking that they're not doing that. And um, yes, the players have got to take responsibility of that. But also the manager has got to be looked at and are those players playing for him? Now, if fans are questioning that, ex-players like you are questioning it because you, you yeah, are the same. I you know, see, it. see it. Like, you see it as I well. I see it, yeah. Right. Do you think they're playing for him? For him? Lee, I, honestly, I think they're trying to play. I don't believe in him. But don't believe in what's going on. So you have to go out there. You have to go out there and represent Arsenal, and I think they're doing that. But there's that. There's a belief. You can't see it. You can't touch it. But you know the best sides have that belief, and Arsenal haven't got that belief. They haven't got. We talk about characters and leadership, but you know what? Once you've got that belief as a group of men, going out on that pitch, you're gonna live and die with your mates. You're going to live and die with your teammates. And you know it. You've been in the stands. You've seen it. And this is why I say sometimes Arsenal fans, they're so smart. They understand it because they've had these teams in the past. They know what it looks like. They yeah. know what it feels like to have a team that fight and battle and can overcome. And teams that come there and, and park the bus and all that. We've overcome all them teams. But what we're seeing now is not right. And you're right, ultimately, 
it falls on the manager. Because the players, I think they're trying, but they don't believe in the project enough now. So going back to the board then, do you think that they're, <clears throat> they, can, they believe that this manager can, can turn it around or are they hoping? I think they're, they're hoping he gets it right. But, but I think they will be working away in the background. Because if they're not working away in the background, they're not doing their job. They are not doing their job. They're not going to come out and announce it. Of course mm. they're not. But if, if Arsenal lose the next two games, there's no way anybody could tell me the board will be saying, no, we're sticking with him to the end of the season. No way. Because you can't, because we're going to be way off of fourth place. And that is, that is still a big thing for Arsenal, like, you know what I mean? Because for the financial rewards of what goes with it, players, can't, it's such a... It's the business it's, model now, yeah. uh, now, Lee. You've got to look at it as a business side as well as the, as the footballing no, side. No, but the, but the business model, as a football club, is geared to getting in the Champions League because you have two lists of players that you'll be after. This is the Champions League list where you're saying, right, we can really fatten this squad up with quality. It's going to cost us money, but with the extra revenue from the Champions League, we can, we can do, do it. it. But if we don't qualify for that, you're picking from a, an inferior bunch of players. Probably the players you've got are better than those players. So it's key for the business model of Arsenal Football Club to qualify for the Champions League. And I, I think there's... Um, Numbers being spouted out about, you know, pay six million now, what was it? Or lose, yeah, what is it, 45, 45 million? Yeah. I think it'd be a lot more than that. Yeah. Because if we don't qualify this season, I think we're, we're going to struggle moving forward. One, one, one final question I've got to ask about the players, you know, um, um, are they playing for the manager? Do, do you think, like, someone like Aubameyang, you would know this, like, you know, is looking at those players say like defenders and going, do you know what, they're not good enough. They're not good enough. They're, I, I look at him, he's not, he's not, not good enough. Look, they're, 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 they're teammates. Yeah, but there is a oh, roof. Hold on, Lee. Go on. They're oh, teammates. But you know, as a player, you know. He's played at successful teams. He knows, he, he, as a player, it's even worse as a player when you've played with top players and you know what he's played with the Hummelses of this world. And then he's looking at the Keystone Cops at the back sometimes. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's, it, as you said, it's Billy Smart Circus sometimes. Yeah. And uh, that's no disrespect to, to the players sometimes because I know they try their best. But it's not working. It's not working. Giving up two goal leads against Crystal Palace at home. So you it's, think like, he might be think that they might be thinking that? And that could be the case. Of course they do. But then enough's enough. It, it's, it's only natural to think, hold on a minute. Well, we're up the other end and we're scoring goals. We're putting us in such a good position and we're chucking it away at the back. This the only, that's, that's your job. That's, that's what you take care of. You yeah. know, so it's a, it's a bit of a difficult one. I know it might seem like we're, we're whining a bit, but these things, I believe, need to be addressed, Lee, because, do you know, I, I think the Arsenal fan base get, get a hard time. Yeah, I, that's one thing I just want to come on finally to that. Like, you know, we, we do get criticised a lot, you know what I mean? Big time. Th this channel is getting criticised at the moment, like, you know. Wrongly, uh, by the right, way. Yeah, wrongly, wrongly. wrongly. By, uh, by, by the way. But because Arsenal fans pay a lot of money, right? A lot of money. And to, to, I know all fans do, but pay a lot of money. And what we're not allowed to... to to, to, to voice an opinion that we're not happy with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, uh, I think that you should be allowed to do that. Now, you can do that in so many ways. Yeah. You can come on, on the channel and voice an opinion, but you can... Tweet it. Tweet it. You it, can do it on social media. You can yeah. boo. Yeah, you can boo. After yeah. the game. Yeah. Uh, hence, not before or, yeah. or during, but afterwards. Yeah, there's so many ways to do it. You know, you go in the pub and, and, and afterwards and, you know, there, there's a shouting matches going on and all that, like, you know. So there's so many ways to do it. And I feel Arsenal fans now, oh, we're not, we're being told, pay your money and shut up. But you're not allowed to say anything. And I think that's wrong. No, it's, I, think that's, I think that's so disrespectful yeah. of the fan base. I, I really do. And look, I, I, I'm, I was a massive, I'm a massive fan of AFTV before I even come on the channel. But the, the, the great thing about AFTV is 
It's real. It's real. The newspapers, you can forget newspapers. I want to hear it from the fans who are actually there. Yeah. Me and you could see an incident there, Lee, and it will be, you'd have a different opinion to me, but that's what football is. It's a game of opinions. Yeah. So, you know, all these journalists having to go at AFTV and um, I think Aubameyang's got caught up in a, a thing with AFTV now where the club has supposedly said to him, you know, you've got to curb speaking. And he's come out and said, you know, I'm a grown man, I speak to a light. Damn right he is. He's a yeah. grown man. He's a captain of Arsenal Football Club. And why shouldn't he, if he saw you on a rock, shouldn't he speak to you? You're a fan. Because you're an Arsenal fan, TV, it doesn't matter. He should be able to speak to whoever he likes. But he still knows he's got the respect of Arsenal Football Club. That's it. So, you know, all of this flack that's flying about for AFTV, I know Troops has been, in, uh, has been caught up in some, some crap as well. I, I, I don't buy it. I don't believe it. Uh, I'm not having it. Because no. I, I, I'm part of it as well now. And we're all Arsenal fans. We're all fans. So, so let's put an end to it and, and let's move forward. And, and, and the, the greatest thing about it, from my point of view, is that, you know, like, I've, I've had newspapers in the past and all that. But when, when a journalist who does not support Arsenal is commenting about saying, I'm not really that interested, but saying that so an Arsenal fan mm -hmm. has got something to say about that game, that's where my interest comes into it now. So I'd rather listen to someone that's paid his money and his opinion, whether they're on Arsenal fan TV or just in the in the in ground, general, in, the out general, in general, yeah. you know, than someone that doesn't feel the pain or the joy yeah. of when Arsenal have won or lost. Just to finish, I never see the journalists when Arsenal are winning, winning the FA Cups and all that. Where was the journalist having a go at AFTV then? No. It's funny, isn't it? Always so it's always the, the doom and gloom. Yeah. The doom and gloom part, but never the glory part. Yeah. So let's finish on that one, Lee. Yeah. So everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to be back in a, a, a fortnight's time, two weeks. So goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. And leave your comments. Good or bad. <laughs> <laughs>